Hello and welcome to Disco Disco Gaming, where today we are going to achieve this using the Ambernic RGDS to get the best out of it when it comes to Nintendo DS emulation. We are going to use it as a dedicated Nintendo DS machine running ESDE as a front end with Drastic as the emulator and with some little other nice tools like the ESDE Companion and Mjolnir to make sure that the experience is as streamlined as possible. So we are not going to fight with RetroArch, with other settings that are not necessary to play Nintendo DS the best way possible on this handheld. We are focusing on what is important from a functionality perspective, but also, as you can see here, from a look and feel perspective, because I think it's rather nice that we now have the possibility to work with this beautiful front end. We have ESDE running on the bottom screen, um, we have the companion running on the top screen, the games launch right away. When you close it, you get back to where you should be going back to the front end where you can select and start any other game that you wish. So I will not be focusing on running this with other apps or other emulators. It's capable to do that, but for that I have the Iron Thor, which is the more capable device when it comes to dual screen handhelds. Of course, also the way more expensive one. So let's dive into it. Let's focus on Nintendo DS on the Ambernic RGDS. First off, if you haven't already done so, we will need to format the SD card and create the ROMs folder for the SDE setup. For that, let's jump into the Ambernic RGDS. We open the file browser, click on the external SD card, the three dots storage settings, and there you have the format option. Click on that. It will ask you whether you will format. Yes, we want to do that. Of course, if you have already done so, then not necessary to do this process again because it will erase all of your files. As you see now, we have it nicely formatted with all the automatic folders populated. Now we are coming to a very important step, which will um, actually decide whether the drastic emulator runs well or not in this setup. We are going to create a folder called ROMs and now very very important, hear me out, actually it's ROMs with a lowercase letter and not capital case letter. In this case it does matter, I did it wrong the first time. Um, if you do it this way it will only open drastic but it will not launch the particular game. Step number two Let's install ESDE. If you have already done that, then obviously you will need to skip this step. I have ESDE on my Google Drive. I will click on download from there. You can get it from the Patreon or from your device if you haven't already. So let's download it. Yes, we will download it anyway. This is a safe program. You are going to wait just a little bit. This is going to depend on your internet, but actually also on the Ambernic RGDS, which does not have the fastest connection. From there, we click on Downloads, there it is, the APK file. We are going to open it just once with the package installer. You can confirm that. It will stage the app, then it will ask you to install, which we can do. And as usual with Android, quite smooth process. Click on open and here we begin the setup. The access is already granted in my case, otherwise you will need to do that. Now we select the directory where the ESDE settings will be located. I like to do that on the SD card. So let's go to the SD card. We are going to create another folder called ESDE, dash DE actually. Take your time for this step, as I'm taking my time here, obviously. There it is. And then you click on Use Folder, and you are good to go. Now we select the ROM folder. Very important, as I said earlier, ROM with a lowercase r. 
um, changing it later would only mess up your system because it will then actually not work so um, yeah if you don't want to have any issues with drastic on this android version please do that before importing it into ESD. Now once we have that selected, ESD will do its thing. It will create system directories in that particular ROMs folder for all of the systems, not just the ones we need today. It will search for games. Now if you already have games in the folder um, you wouldn't get this message, otherwise it is going to tell you no game files were found. That's now the chance actually to quit ESDE, copy your ROMs into the NDS folder and from there you can start ESDE again and it will auto detect and show you the games. I did that work using Total Commander which is a file manager you can get for free. It has a plugin so that you can access your computer with FTP. Um, for me that's the easiest way. You can of course also eject your SD card, plug it into a computer and copy the ROMs from there. There are various possibilities in that respect. Now after you have copied your ROMs you can start ESD again. It will not look that nice or fancy. Um, we will do some things like going into the input settings. Uh, Disable the touch overlay as we don't need it. We have a controller in the device. So that's a quality of life improvement here. Now since this is a dedicated device, let's press on start and change in the UI settings some configurations here. We want to have the Nintendo DS as a system selected by default and it should also start into the game list, meaning you don't have to select DS to see your games. Now it's time, time to scrape. You will need a screen scraper account for that. Um, after you put in your account settings, you can select Nintendo DS here, select all, and then start the scraping, which will take a while in my case, um, about half an hour, I would say, for the 100 games. Now, um, time to change the ESDE theme which is not so easy on the Ambernic RGDS. As with some other Ambernic handhelds, I will show you what error message you get when you try to do it with the theme downloader. Unfortunately, this does not work as far as I know. Um, so it will try to download the themes, but at the end of it, what you will see is this error message. But there are ways around it. I will show you directly on your Ambernic device how you can handle it manually. For that let's jump to the Ambernic RGDS, link down below with respect to the themes that we need to go in. There is a themes list on the web. We are going to look for a very specific theme here that I like and that's the one that I showed off. That's the ISO interpreted. You can click on that one. There is a GitHub of the developer and there we are going to click on code on the right side and it will give you the option to download the zip file. Now let's go grab the downloaded files into your files browser. We click on downloads. You should have it right there, ISO interpreted. You click on the zip, you see the folder. Um, if you click into it, you see various content there, which is not of interest right now. So we are gonna go back select the folder, that's important, the folder, not the zip file, and then extract to. And now you need to navigate to your SD card, to the SD folder that you previously created, into the folder themes. We click on to extract. It's going to take a bit, it's a couple of seconds, and that is about it. You can control whether the folder is there, and there it is. After that we can close the file browser, we can restart ESDE. It's going to search for the games, do all the updates that are necessary to get the startup going. And from there, with the start button, we can go into the UI settings. And under theme, you see there it is ISO interpreted. You can fiddle around with the settings here. I'm going to start with green. And then you can back out 
interesting thing here. Um, not that I don't want to show you any further images, but it's actually crashing, uh, which is normal. I tried it a couple of times, so it crashes. And when you restart it again, we give it some time as ESD will need to do some updates to the games and check for new games. And there it is. Nice and beautiful with the green background. Now you might like that or not. Um, let's go into the theme settings again by pressing start where I will change the color setting on the color scheme to light and there it is. I like it a bit more this way but feel free to play around with the settings what you want to see how you want to see it and obviously what color scheme you like the most with your Ambonic RGDF. Now before we can start any game we need to set the emulator in the SDE because otherwise it will try to start RetroArch. We press start we go into Utilities, not into other settings, Alternative Emulators. And there, if you go down, there is Drastic Standalone. You select that and that's about it. Now to get the nice ESD dual screen experience that I've shown you in the beginning, we need to download something that is called ESD Companion. Um, this has been available, I think, for a couple of days now, literally. So quite new, but I really like it. I've provided the link down below, obviously. Um, download the file and then install the app. I will show you now right away on the device what you need to do. We click on the downloaded ESD companion app. We install it. And we can launch the app. Let's get into the companion. We pin it first to the second stream. Then we are going to read that. And then we'll say, yeah, man, we want to do it in good old Rust style. Don't be bothered about this being blank. I think it is an RGDS issue. I'm not sure how it looks on other handhelds, uh, but it's completely normal that it's blank. So you can click on continue. It will tell you now what to do. Um, we need to do some work here when it comes to the scripts folder and setting up ESD for scripts. So let's first go to the external SD card, the SD folder. We are going to select the scripts folder, which is already there and click on use this folder. Then there is another folder that we need to pre-select here so that the companion app knows where it is. Again, we click select. We need to go one back here, ESDE. And there is the downloaded media folder. Click allow. And you can continue to the next step, but only once you have done your work with respect to ESD. So we're going to have that on the bottom screen. I will show you. We go into the main menu with start, then into other settings. From there you scroll down. We need to enable the custom event scripts. We're going to select browsing custom events as well and then click on the top and there it is. As you can see you can scroll through the artwork now. It will show you a nice beautiful picture on top. You can also select a video to be played after X seconds so that's quite straightforward then if you want to change it We'll only need to do one last thing. Step number five. We are going to install a little helper called Mjolnir, which I believe is the name of Thor's hammer, as this was originally developed for the Iron Thor. I have provided the link down below. You can visit the GitHub, download the respective APK file um, under the releases. Obviously, you can read through everything here and see and try to understand how it works, but we'll just do the quick run here. I'll show you from the releases pages how to download it and how to very 
briefly and quickly set this one up. Under assets, there it is. We're going to click on the APK file. It takes just a bit to download. Once that's done, you can directly open the file from there. Again, we're going to click on just once. Install Mjolnir. And from there, I will show you the very quick configuration here. Um, now, what is important is you actually need to have ESD on top and the companion on the bottom because it's sort of swapped in terms of the settings. Otherwise, it will be the other way around. And that's about it. Now, every time that you go back from a game or from anything, it will make sure that ESD opens on the bottom and on top you have always the ESD companion. Um, that's uh, the power of Mjolnir, you could say, of Thor's hammer, which comes in really handy also with the Ambernic RGDS. And yeah, with this I've been having tons of fun with this uh, little device. I know it's not perfect, it doesn't certainly have the best Android build, uh, which I would say it's typical Ambernic styled. So I'm, I'm really looking forward here to get the Gamma OS once it's released. Then I will maybe also revisit this guide if there is anything um, that is actually interesting for you. But uh, for now I think this is the nicest setup we can have on the Ambernic RGDS. It might, might not be the best handhelds power-wise, but you know, with this setup it's quite straightforward. It really modernizes your Nintendo DS experience. I think it's actually a great experience if you are not very keen on uh, rhythm games or games that require heavy use of the stylus. Um, with the companion you even improve the ESD experience even more. Mjolnir gives you the opportunity to always come back to the ESD on the bottom screen and the companion on the top screen. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. It was a bit longer than expected, but I really liked the results. I hope you liked them too. I hope that is something that is going to work for you as well as it's working for me. Thanks a lot. Subscribe if you like my channel. See you the next time.